Arnold Kurtze is an assistant professor of justice studies at Montclair State University and is currently a scholar with the Wilson Center's Global Europe program. He joins us to discuss his project, very complex topic, alternative transitional justice spaces is maybe the shorthand, but can you describe for us in lay terms, for those of us who aren't academics, what that means? Yes, um, thank you for having me today, John. Pleasure. Um, so when we talk about transitional justice, um, we talk about projects and instruments and tools and policy strategies that um, the government in place, um, transition governments oftentimes, but as well as civil society have in order to overcome or deal with the past. It could have been a violent conflict, or it could have been an authoritarian regime. And so what I look at in my research is um, spanning from the Balkans um, to the MENA region, so the North African region and um, Middle East, how governments and civil society actors um, address mass atrocities and um, problematic issues. So we're talking like, serious um, trauma, civil war, genocide, things of this nature. And correct. traditionally ha have, has it been things like public apologies or reparations. And, but you're looking at something a little different than that. Exactly. I started out in the Balkans with the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. And when I've done research on the ground um, in my fieldwork, I realized, wow, there's a momentum that's going on. There's a vector that's different. And I uh, delved into civil society and saw that there was a big push for a regional truth commission. As you can imagine, the Balkans, um, we have the term balkanization, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, you had not one conflict, you had many conflicts, depending on the context. And so this truth, and or now they labeled it fact-finding commission initiative, um, was very problematic because each of the countries um, in place had different issues that they wanted to deal with. Um, in Slovenia, we had, for instance, issues of the erased, um, those were um, ethnically non-Slovenians that all of a sudden disappeared from the state register. They had a 30 days or um, a little longer to register, but then they're gone. They lost their citizenship. And so while well, when we go further east, we have Bosnia or Kosovo and um, the Srebrenica massacre genocide is, um, is a big um, question that has to be addressed by all parties, right? And so you see that the issues at hand are very, very complicated and, and different. No and one so, size fits all. Exactly. So, so is ultimately, are the goals different as well? Is it about justice writ large or is it about specific things like accountability? What are the outcomes that people are looking for? In, in general, when you had the international community, particularly with regards to the Balkans, it was about bringing security stability because the ICTY was created in the midst of a war. Mm -hmm. And so the idea was, although accountability was a big, big buzzword, the idea was to create stability in the region. So you want something functional where in just previously it was not functional. Exactly. And so when years pass, I mean, um, the um, court was established, the tribunal was established in, um, in 93, started operating in 95, and then we had the, um, the Sebrenic incident, right? And um, so it's been years and years and decades. And so they're still operating, and they've been trying to close down um, for the last... Um, couple of years in last decade. And so in this time span, you have, of course, other mechanisms pop up as um, the Truth Commission or reparations. And um, it is important because that shows that society tries to look at different mechanisms um, to cope and deal with the past. And, and, and your, your process, you're doing in-depth interviews mm -hmm, with people mm -hmm, from mm -hmm. the, the Balkans, Egypt, Tunisia, a, a wide swath. What are you finding as far as any commonalities? Are there common threads that occur? Yeah, it is very interesting. So when we just hop from the Balkans now further to the, the North African region, for instance, um, Tunisia had its first attempt by creating a ministry of transitional justice. And so they now created also a um, um, Truth and Dignity Commission in order to deal um, with the issues that not only appeared during the revolutionary upheavals and uprisings, but also that go way back to the 50s when um, Bourguiba was trying to um, establish um, the republic and uh, sort of decolonize um, Tunisia. Mm -hmm. And um, so, as you can imagine, any transition is a messy business. And so, um, the um, political Islamist forces in power then during that transition government um, in, in 2013 was really pushing um, for 
a reconciliation or an accountability effort that would go beyond the short period of the revolution. And so um, while they're still trying to figure things out, the commonalities here are that civil society is very much a vector, and especially youth, um, that pushes um, for different and alternative spaces of dealing with the past. There's a, this strategic confrontation space mm -hmm, term, I mm -hmm. think. Do you coin that phrase? Yes, yes, correct. And so this is talking about some of these new alternative types of venues for transitional justice, largely driven by young people. And some of that involves art. Correct. Could um, you describe one of those examples? Yes, yes. And I'll go from the Balkans and then um, end up in, um, in North Africa. Okay. What's important is, and especially um, when we um, look at Tunisia, the revolution, although it was sort of mobilized and pushed by the, um, um, the unions, youth was a big, big factor. Yet when the transition um, came along, you saw that youth was more and more marginalized. They did not have a political voice. And so with um, what I'm trying to coin here with the um, strategic confrontation spaces is youth creating alternative spaces, be it online through the cyberspace or be it by using, using the street and walls and basically um, performance art in order to express um, their voice more broadly within society. And is, is this, a, 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 you can yeah. talk about a big mural, for example. Yes. Is it effective? In the um, way that past efforts toward transitional justice have yes, been effective? Yes, um, I would say so. When we talk, for instance, about the Balkans, when um, the Youth Initiative for Human Rights in Kosovo, in the Kaplan Pristina, build a 12 or 15 foot long wall that was seven feet high and put the names of almost 1,800 victims, including ethnic Serbs, not only Kosovo Albanians, mm. you can imagine that that sparks a sort of an outcry, sure. public outcry, support as well as a discomfort and saying, what are you doing with our public space here? When you and describe it like that, it almost sounds like an impromptu Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Exactly, exactly. And it is meant um, as a temporary installation. It is meant um, not only to shock, but really to wake up the public and say, we have to deal with this. And another example when we talk about murals is uh, Mohammed, um, uh, um, Mohad Street in, um, in Egypt near Tahia Square. So it's the street that led to the interior ministry that um, was really, really entrenched in a battle a warfare between civil society, between the protesters and the security forces, um, especially in November 2011. And um, so, um, what it has become was sort of a shrine where then graffiti artists have then plastered the walls with um, their art. And of course the government trying to uh, control the situation and society has then um, made an effort to clean these walls. Mm -hmm. And so by cleaning these walls they gave the artists new space to express new forms of sort of identity politics and political issues that then um, appeared on the walls. And so you had, a, di you had well. a dialogue and you had the international attention. You have many, many illustrations and books and, and the media is just full of graffiti art in um, during the Arab Spring. And so it actually draws attention to now a more civil and more peaceful use of art. When we go to Tunisia, you had a campaign that was in, called Inside Out, or Le Trente de Bis, um, is an art studio that now is exposing work from El Cid and other artists that were very important during the transition. Because um, El Cid, for instance, has used um, Arabic calligraphy and um, verses of the Quran uh, in order to um, then um, ornament different buildings and one famous building is the Jara Minaret in Gabes and um, so not only is it beautifully and aesthetically pleasing um, but it also sort of has that message um, that um, many people and especially in the political establishment tend to forget Tunisia is a republic a democratic republic or trying to work on its democratic transition but it has Islam ingrained in its constitution. And so um, when you have political establishment trying to um, get these political Islamist forces out of the game, I think you have, um, you only see them the half of the picture. And so I think um, with these artists coming together um, and bringing in a new message, when we talk, for instance, about um, 
the president's message about national security and the fight against global terrorism. It's true. I mean, um, if we look at Libya, we have a problem, right? It's a non-state. Um, you have warring tribes there and, and, and the conflict is imminent. It's right next door. Um, but the way the artists um, and youth and civil society deals with it is different because when we look at how um, after the Bardo attacks in March, um, um, this was a shock for Tunisian society and it unified Tunisian society while the president was pushing for a unification or unified message through national security. The artists said it was important to say um, I'm coming to Tunisia this summer, which was sort of a, a campaign that was started through social media. And um, so the event that is held now um, at Le Trente Bis is sort of an art installation where these artists are exposing their work. So you see already a commodification from sort of revolutionary yeah. art now to the mainstream. It's a fascinating happening. evolution of a, mm -hmm. of a process. Uh, quick final thought about yes. people who have a, a significant more interest in this than we can cover in this limited time. Where can they go? to learn more about your work? Um, you can go on the um, Wilson Center's website, or I have also a personal website. So um, you What can is the URL for your personal site? Um, it's my first name, last name, dot com. Okay, so, great. Perfect. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, and John. And continued luck success. Thank you.